What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and today we're back on the 1931 Model A Roadster. Last time we got that Duval windshield put onto it. Um, showed you guys how to work on the cowl and how to grind and fit and attach one of these windshields because every car is a little bit different. So check out that video if you uh, are interested. Today we're working on the grill of this car and the reason why we did that windshield install first is so that we could kind of design this split grill to be you know similar to the split on the Duval windshield so that's what this video is going to be about thanks a lot for watching everybody don't forget to like click subscribe hit notifications let's do it All right guys, we've got one more metal shaping class, March 30th to April 2nd in Las Vegas with Christian Sosa. I hope to see you guys there. I know this is short notice, but get on it. These are gonna go fast. This will be the last one that I'm doing uh, for the foreseeable future and we'll try and get back at it in the fall. Thanks everybody. All right, so split grill situation. I personally would like to see this match the Duval windshield. I've got Elio with me again today, so we're both gonna kind of work on this a little bit and get the split happening. Um, I'm not sure right now, like we've got to figure out between me and him, we're just gonna kind of use our brains and, and see how we're gonna do this. I, I like to try and really think about what steps it's gonna to take to complete a modification and it might weigh, you know, one way or another, whether or not that's the way to go. Because um, with this split grill, there's two ways we can do it as far as I see it. It's how is that grill going to mount back in there, right? Is it going to be, are we covering this grill and just splitting the sheet metal around it and this grill mounts from the backside or is this grill going to have to be cut into two pieces? Are we going to, you know, have to fabricate this edge trim around this grill to split it in half? Like what? processes is going to take to do that you know i don't want to go in there just totally blind i want to have somewhat of a game plan so um basically what i just said there's you could either push it in from the back side and make the sheet metal around it kind of cover this outside bit so that it's just the bars and i think that could look really cool um, or another way would be to just add the split into the sheet metal here and leave this factory front edge of the grill and this factory edge exposed and then actually fabricate this part in a split and and actually physically make it into two grills so that's what Elio and I are gonna have to kind of like hash out and uh, and think about before we really get started um, yeah, anyway, so this is gonna be a really cool video. I think it's gonna definitely change the look of this car and kind of set the tone for how cool it's gonna be. So uh, let's get into it. We're just gonna figure it out and make our game plan. Okay, I'm gonna pop this thing out and just kind of see. I think it's just sitting in there. It just, it just pulls out, just trying to put. Yeah, I'm just push, push on one area and pop it. There we go. There's the insert itself. It's just kind of slips right in. Has a couple of small bolt holes that mm -hmm. secure it. And that's that's it. That's all it is. So we've got this lip all the way around that it sits against. So it doesn't need much of a flange to stop against. It's already better. It's already better? It's already better. Oh, just like... Oh, do you not like that insert? Like, maybe no. we should just make our. Oh, I never even thought of that. Dude, look, dude, look. Full custom look, insert. Look. Yeah. It's a speedster, dude. It's not oh. a. Oh. Oh, man. I didn't even think of that. I was so dead oh, set really? on using the, the, the 32 grill insert. Oh, I didn't know that. I, I wasn't even that. thinking that, <clears throat> man. Actually, that's a really good point because we could make a pretty deadly grill insert. And have free reign on how to make the shape. Yeah. I grab that grill from just for like IT. It's not not obviously using them. Oh, the grills from upstairs. Yeah. It's just different views. You know what I mean? From different views. It's just like completely different. 
different style of silk. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, look at that. That's fucked up. That's it. Right? Like make it's this straighter. Up. And if and you know what? If we make our own grill insert, we could drop the insert back. Like that one's this thick. Could drop the insert back to the level of this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like tuck it well, in. Well that's a finished edge too, so you can just leave it and have it come from behind. Yeah, look how much more aggressive that looks. I always love that grill. Cut. But like, have it like man, I didn't even think of how to do it. Okay, so let's build this split. We'll build the split. We're not thinking about the inserts. And we're gonna make ourselves like the coolest grill inserts ever. <laughs> That's what you're thinking. Let's make this split. Okay, so first off, my mind is blown a little bit now that I consider the option of not using the original grill. I don't know why I had that in my mind as something that we had to do, but we are limitless. We are gonna build that center section. We'll start off by making a wire form of the shape. There we go. And then uh, we'll go from there, build the sheet metal, and then we'll start talking about grill ideas.
So at this point, if you're making a wireframe like we're doing here, the objective is to make this as accurate as possible because this frame itself, not only is it used as like a bit of a design tool so that we can visually see what kind of shapes we're working with, but how accurate this is is absolutely important and critical to your patterns that you take off of it. I don't wanna to have to try and come back and remake this more accurate so that I can take a better pattern. But once this is actually on here, exactly how we want it, we'll be able to use tape or paper and take patterns to cut our metal to shape so that we can shape these pieces accurately and know that the openings are gonna be exact. I don't leave extra to try and trim close to fit later. I'd rather know right away whether or not I'm being accurate. So if this first step is accurate, then your patterns are gonna be accurate, your cuts on your sheet metal are gonna be accurate, and the shapes that you're about to weld onto here will all be accurate. You can trust the first step. So um, anyway, also another thing, if you're working with wire forms like this, um, you don't want any spring to be in the metal because once we start adding more, maybe not so much on this particular wire form, but if you're to make a complicated wire form that has multiple pieces all welded together, if there's any tension in your wire as you tack it, wherever you've heated up under tension, it will release and it'll move and, and, and once again, not be as accurate. So something, to, something else to think about. But uh, for the most part, we're just bending the wire into the shapes we like. Elio's standing back, he's looking, he's kind of telling me what looks good. And uh, we've kind of, I stood back and just looked at this one. I think that we're kind of nailing it as far as having a nice straight section and then turning into a radius similar to the windshield and peaking it similar to the windshield. And actually his idea of bringing this a little bit further out so that we have some extra meat to taper this similar to the windshield as well as he thinks it looks better and I agree. So uh, we're just going to keep on making this wireframe once the wireframe's done. We'll talk about paper patterning this so that we can transfer it to sheet metal. So I did go ahead and grab the laser level for this. Uh, if you have one, this is a self uh, leveling laser level. So your piece will have to be leveled as well. So that's what I've done. I leveled the car. It was a little bit off. You know, I took the laser level down it. I've got it on the peak of the windshield. I checked it to the center of the trunk lid where the latch is. That is centered now with the laser. Everything's kind of perfect. So having that information and knowing that I can trust it is crucial to designing this little piece here. So I'm really stoked with kind of how it is. You see there's a little bit of, you know, chalk marks here because, or soapstone marks because we're considering adding a cool bead roll to it just to kind of make it look like a little bit more luxurious 
of an automobile from that time, you know, like they were really plain and simple because they were practical, but some of the companies that didn't quite make it, they added little touches that made it a little bit more, you know, luxurious. So I, I kind of am thinking about doing some kind of bead roll around this grill to kind of mimic the border of the shell as well, or not the shell, but the windshield frame as well. That's something I'm thinking about. But next, now that I, I can confirm that this is a good center bar, uh, I definitely can start building off of it and I'm going to um, continue making these wire forms so that I know how much sheet metal I need right for, like for the for the whole thing. So if there's a little lip in here where the grill would sit onto. I've got to continue that lip on each side of my split bar, this bar here. So I'm going to have to make my wire form come down and have its little flange um, build that shape into it so I can take patterns of that as well so that I can make those pieces. So um, yeah, I'm just going to keep working on the wire form and uh, I like how it's looking. Hopefully you guys do. So, what do you guys think? I am, uh, I did end up redoing this. You know, at least this center bar was 
perfect to the laser, so I ended up breaking these off and making them a little bit skinnier. I think it looks better. I think it was getting a little bit too wide and uh, and a little bit skinnier makes more sense. I know it's kind of hard to see with the shadows and stuff on that cardboard, but hopefully you get an idea of the shape. I know, um, you know, some tractor grills have this split grill shell, so it's like very hard to kind of dance the line of like looking like a tractor grill. I don't really want to do that. I want it to look a little bit more sleek and kind of speed sturdy, that sort of idea. So um, I think skinnying that up hopefully will help with that. Now the main idea about doing the bars is, like I said, for the template, um, and you want to also have enough support for the paper. Not only do you want, you know, your borders and edges to be in good standing as well as the center, but you want enough crossbars in here to support the paper around, um, you know, if you're going to have a curve in the paper, that's why these bars are here, so that it can kind of support the paper, help it flow, because that is important for the template. Like if the paper sags in here and then we mark it, or if the taper is held up, or sorry, the taper, if the paper sags in here without a bar here and we mark our template versus having the bars in place so that the paper is held so that it can conform to the actual profile that we're looking for, the measurement will be different where our template is marked. So if it's held in the center or not, that will change it. So these are all things that you'll kind of learn by doing this technique with paper patterning and, uh, and using uh, a wire frame like this. I want to take a quick second to let you guys know that we are doing a March class. It's coming up in a couple weeks, March 30th to April 2nd. This is going to be the last metal shaping class that uh, Christian Sosa and myself put on in Vegas, so jump on it. There's going to be a few seats left and uh, it's going to be a great time. So um, three days metal shaping, we are going to learn the wire form, we are going to learn shrinking, um, we're going <clears> to <throat> We're gonna learn about the wire form, paper patterning, like what I'm doing here is all techniques that we cover in there as well as hand metal shaping and uh, using the power hammers and, uh, and the planishing hammers and stuff like that. So hopefully you guys get a chance to come to this one in March. Uh, I don't have any dates for the rest of the year. We're hoping to do some more in the fall, but that's a little bit up in the air as of yet. But for now, the only date we have is March 30th to April 2nd. So hopefully you guys can get in on that and I'll see you there. Um, let's get back to uh, patterning out this grill.
What do you guys think? I think this is a pretty cool visual representation of what it's really gonna look like. Um, I, I personally really like it, you know? Um, and, I, and, uh, and I've shown Hugo, which is the guy who owns this car, and he really likes it, so I think that we're gonna keep moving on with this design. I like that it got a little bit skinnier. I like that the sides are straight and it's got this sharp peak in it. I'm still kind of on the fence whether or not we make some kind of bead roll that does sort of swoopy business that kind of makes this pop out a little bit, kind of like the swoopy business that pops out on that Duval windshield. I don't know if that could be like a nice touch. Um, maybe if it kind of peaked and came over and then kind of around and then down the side just to make that extra little body line bubble out. Something I've been thinking about, but I think I'm gonna leave the video here. This is the first template I'm going to make out of sheet metal in the next video. I'm going to, uh, you know, try and make this out of one piece, the one piece that we're looking at, and uh, crease it, and then slice it to peak it for when these shapes come in. And uh, I may or may not try and maybe add just a little bit of a reverse curve in this area just to pronounce that shape a little bit. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet, but then we're going to have to roll these edges over and then start filling in the side. I think these sides are going to be a little bit easier. It's going to be mostly flat with a flange, a little bit of shrinking on the flange. Anyway, that's going to be the next video. So I want to thank you all for watching Make It Custom. I really appreciate you guys. I love talking to you guys in the comments. Um, I've got a few plans to kind of make make it custom a little bit better this year. I'm kind of getting excited about uh, working with a couple companies as well and bringing some more discounts to you guys. One of which being KBC Tools, kbctools.com. If you go register with them, they'll give you a 10% discount when you use promo code Make It Custom, all capital letters, all one word. Don't forget about Hoppo's Hydraulics. If you saw the Buick video, um, you guys know I love hydraulics. They also have a standing discount code for you guys, 10% off. Make it custom, all one word, all capital letters. Um, and anyway, we're, we actually have a few more companies that are gonna be doing this as well. I'm sort of soliciting guys, hoping to just get you guys a little bit you know, of a discount at as many places as I can. So um, KBC Tools, but definitely check those guys out. Um, all the little itchy fab sort of things that you might need, cutters, tools, um, I, you know, deburring tools, layout tools, anything to do with machining. They, uh, they kind of got you covered there and um, they're big supporters of the channel so I like to shout them out. So thank you guys once again because you guys are my biggest supporter, really, is you guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications and join the custom crew if you like. There's a little button at the end of the video and we'll catch you on the next one. Don't forget about the metal shaping class. It's the last one for a little bit. March 30th, to April 2nd. If you can make it, link is in the description. Thank you guys. See you next time. One more thing I forgot to mention. I'm coming to Australia. So all you Australian homies, supporters of the channel, I hope to see you guys. I'll be in Melbourne for a show at the beginning of May, then two back-to-back -back weekends of metal shaping classes at Motor Retro with Aiden, legend from Bespoke Coachworks, Vaughn Giorgio from Motor Retro, legends, Heron Forbes Machinery House and Metal Master Tools are sponsoring these events and we'll also be in Sydney at the end of May for the Hot Rod and Custom Car Show there as well. So, hope to see you guys. I'll be playing at the Heron Forbes Machinery House booth, messing around with their tools, their Metal Master Power Hammers. I'm really excited to try those out too. It's gonna be an awesome trip. So, uh, we'll see you guys there.